Okay, so I got all the missing hardware from my water pump. Um, at the dealer, I actually found out that uh, I think it's all OBD2 uh, water pumps don't have dowels. And me being as stubborn as I am, I'll actually have to hold the dowels here from my OBD1 LS water pump. And they absolutely will not fit in these holes. These holes are way too small for it. There's not a chance, not even if you freeze freeze the dowels and heat this up, there's no way they're going to fit. So it's, I guess, it's just OBD2 vehicles don't get the dowels. So um, I've got the hardware I need, and I'm just going to install it like that without the dowels. Okay, so for sealant on the water pump, you really don't need it. The manual doesn't necessarily call for it. Um, so what I do, I just put a tiny little bit on the inside strictly just to hold the gasket in place during the install but really in reality this rubber gasket is all you need it's enough to make the seal you don't need a whole bunch of Honda Bond or RTV or anything like that alright so just like that we're going to install it I uh, make sure my surface is clean and so there's three shorter bolts and two longer bolts the two longer bolts go here I think the uh, threads start deeper or something all right, and the torque on all these is 8.7 foot-pounds. So I torqued mine to 9. In my opinion, I think it's safe to go to 9 or even round down to 8, either or. But I went to 9. So I got my spring here on my tensioner pulley. It just comes up and onto that. And before I put the timing belt on, I need to remove the cam gears so I can put the back um, the back timing cover on first then put them back on then I can put the timing belt on alright cam gears are off I got my cover um, don't forget that these plastic covers use a uh, rubber gasket alright so covers on cam gears back on and so lining uh, the crank up at top dead center I always use this mark here on the oil pump and there's a line here on the gear so I just take a card line it up to the arrow to make sure that it is in fact lined up with that line and we're good so I'm gonna go get my timing belt and I'm gonna put it on okay so once we're lined up at top dead center down here we need to line up our cam gears. The up arrows obviously are going to be pointing up. There's um, lines in the cam gears here and here on both of them. So these two need to line up as well as being straight with the top of the um, with the top of the head. So we've got those lined up, and with everything like this, this is all number one cylinder being top dead center of its compression stroke so I also have my spring disconnected so I'm not fighting tension the whole time that I'm routing the belt so the manual wants it to go around the drive pulley first then the tensioner pulley then the water pump pulley then the intake cam and then the exhaust cam alright so I got my spring on this bolt here is loose enough for the tensioner pulley to move so now what we're gonna do I'm gonna turn this counterclockwise and watch the cam gears I'm going to rotate it three teeth on the cam gear. So that's two 
and three. Uh, okay. So now I don't need to push on this or anything. The spring is pulling it itself. By turning it, all the slack was taken up by this. So I'm going to tighten it up. Okay. So now I'm going to turn the whole engine counterclockwise two revolutions until the cam gears come back up to up and I'm going to double check everything to make sure it still all lines up after rotating the engine. Okay, so there there the cam gears line up and and the drive pulley still lines up so we're good the engine is now in time alright I'm torquing the timing tensioner bolt to 40 foot pounds before I put the rest of the covers on I have to put this um, mount because one of the covers blocks it. I'm also torquing these bolts to 40 foot pounds. Alright, now before I put this cover on, there's something I want to point out. If you look right here, uh, you can see that this, uh, the inner cover doesn't really match up um, correctly to the block now this is anyone who knows an LSV tech is a Frankenstein build so I got an OBD2 oil pump because the head is OBD2 so I need the OBD2 lower timing cover to match up with the OBD2 upper timing cover and I also had to use an OBD2 um, rear timing cover back whatever you want to call it and when I say OBD2 I mean 97 and up style now the problem with that is my block is an OBD1 so here in this spot where it goes from the head to the block you can see where it's not really uh, lining up right so just temporarily I'm putting these covers on what I'm gonna have to end up doing is taking them off and this one here just um, modifying it a little bit shaving some off or even just cutting that whole piece off because if you look it's also chafing the timing belt which is no good either so uh, I'm gonna have to come up with a fix for that now the covers are on temporarily so I can't put the uh, harmonic balancer on yet but um, these washers so if you notice there's they're kind of concave almost so it, it almost comes out a little bit there's one on the inside as well as one on the outside the one on the inside goes like that um, with the concave part uh, facing towards the oil pump and the one on the outside comes like that um, if you're confused I know I didn't do a great job of explaining it if you're confused it's in the manual so look in the manual you can also find pictures online on like Google images it'll show you how it goes alright so here's my fix for the timing cover problem you can see I went and I cut this portion off of the uh, OBD2 GSR cover and I cut that same portion off of the OBD1 cover that I had from my LS and it fits perfect so what I'm gonna do here's my bottom cover and what it does it actually goes on to it like that once the bottom cover is installed so I'm gonna JB weld in here 
stick this in there, let that cure, and have this piece become a permanent part of the lower cover, and it will seal up this missing portion that I had to cut off of here. So now this is sitting flush, the timing belt doesn't rub anymore, and everything should go on correctly now. Alright, so I went and put that together with JB Weld. I got both covers bolted down while it's curing, but it's all together now. Um, it's kind of hard to see. I don't have a flashlight, but um, it works great. Everything's sealed up. Everything sits flush the way it's supposed to, so I'm happy with it. Alright, now the timing belt's back on. Before I put the covers back on, I just want to show for proof, I guess. Um, everything's clear. There's no chafing now. 